By the way, uh, the first parables that we will be talking about are these two and, and the, uh, uh, the prodigal son in chapter, Luke chapter 15, so um, on Wednesday at the Bible study. So we'll go into that in more depth. But um, for now, um, I'm just going to kind of touch on that and um, show you this video that um, I, hopefully most of you had received a, uh, an email about. Um, so most of you know that most mornings I run uh, when I'm able to or when the weather cooperates, and it's nearly always along Patterson. And since I've been here for a year, just over a year, and I've seen the entire cycle of the um, far of farming corn, and learned a great deal about it in that time. Um, Dan has been especially uh, informative and it's been beautiful, but I've made some observations. First of all, timing is everything. Certain corn seed work best when planted after a specific time of, of following specific environmental and weather conditions. And you can tell that by the numbers on the, those little signs I found out. Um, I also learned that the weather can help the crop flourish and it can also uh, decimate a crop. And when you plant corn seed, you expect corn, right? And when you plant soybean seed, you expect soybean plants. So when I run um, fields on either side of me and see pots of brilliant yellows and purest of cornflower blues, adorning the edges, the beauty of it. Well, it takes my breath away. And that's not so great for running. <laughs> so I take pictures. And this just, uh, you know, and it never does justice <laughs> to what you see when you're there. Um, but these, these yellow, uh, what, what are those flowers anyway? You're going to have to yell it out. What, do you, what is it? The yellow ones? Anyone know? It's got a pretty weed. <laughs> <laughs> really pretty weed. It's beautiful, and I love it. Um, I'm fairly confident that um, the farmers don't plant those seeds. <laughs> Am I right? <laughs> right. They just happen. They serve no other purpose but to offer beauty to us. But they're also necessary, and here's why. Um, cornflowers are now endangered. I don't know if you knew that. Because of an overuse of herbicides. Life happens and beauty is created until we are overzealous and sanitize, weed out, Deracinate, remember that word from last, last week? Deracinate. More than um, the unproductive, uh, unproductive or harmful bits and eradicate the beauty, along with indicators that might alert us to the danger. Uh, the herbicides and insecticides could be poisoning us too. Well, this is really good indication that this corn is gonna be good to eat because <laughs> we have all of these beautiful flowers. I wonder if we do a similar thing with each other when we remain focused on one aspect of one thing and overlook the beauty and the caution to consider the larger picture. <clears throat> Stop and smell the cornflowers <laughs> or take a picture. Someone from our congregation who's not been able to uh, come on Sunday mornings for a while watches this service as it goes live on Facebook. She read um, through last Sunday's sermon uh, and left a comment on the church's website, which I just was so excited about that somebody was using the website. Um, and I wanted to share the comment with you because it's very insightful, it's vulnerable, and um, she will not have the opportunity to share it here. Um, with us here at, during the coffee hour when we have conversation as well. She said, this morning I sat and read about reconciling action. It has given me a whole new insight of myself. 
I realize I need to listen to others and possibly look at myself in a different way. Thank you for helping me realize this. I'm hoping I can um, now look at my sister who's getting weaker and, and find ways to help her with her struggle. I feel I have been too wrapped up in my own feelings. How grateful I am to her for being so honest about that because don't we all kind of get wrapped up in our own feelings about things? And he or she was putting it out on the computer, out in the, the webosphere, <laughs> for everyone to see. And um, in response to, to the sermon, and it just, it, it encouraged me so much, and it's exactly what I'm hoping that we will do with one another. What happens when our perspective is altered because of a dear relationship? And I'd like to show you this video now. It's um, the uh, bishop, um, he, so he and his wife started the Disciple Bible Study um, program uh, way back in the, well, he's gonna share all this, but anyway, he's gonna share his story and it's about 15 minutes long, so um, if Hello. you could make sure it's loud this enough. This is Richard Wilson. Nearly 35 years ago, my wife, Julie, and I wrote the first Disciple Bible Study an in-depth curriculum that eventually numbered four. <laughs> We've had some uh, technical difficulty getting it in the slideshow. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, I'm Bishop Richard Wilkins. Nearly 35 years ago, my wife, Julie, and I wrote the first Disciple Bible Study, an in-depth curriculum that eventually numbered Beautiful flowers. <laughs> Hello, I'm Bishop Richard Wilkins. I'm going to teach you a new word. That's the word up there. Organon. Does anyone know what that is? Anyone? No. Do you know what it is? No. What is it? 
organon, something, a tool or instrument to use to gain knowledge. Oh, I don't have my thing on. A tool or instrument to gain knowledge, right? So like a dictionary or encyclopedia, or a set of guiding principles for a particular science or philosophy or discipline. So um, the internet was my organ of choice when doing research for school is a, a one way of using it. Or the scientists abided by an organ of peer-reviewed documents or books and studies to inform her work. Do you have an organ on that um, informs what you did, uh, have done, or do? Of course, in church, we use an organ on of what? 